The party nice, so na na na. Nobody they watch, nobody, everybody they vibe, oh na na na. Oh. <laughs> Sexy girls they around, oh na na na. Till the empire spend, now we know they watch a mount, oh na na na. And the billies. Danny used to tell me all the time. Sparks when feats and preparation combine. The road been right here all this time. But you gotta look with more than your eyes. And the small axe Jesse Royal representing for I just star mindset. Rich forever. Mindset, blessed love, manners and respect. I want to greet the item in the divine name of his Imperial Majesty. Emperor Eel Selassie I the first, Empress Menin the first, Holy Manuel I, King Selassie I, Jack, Rastafari. One more day above ground and we give him thanks and praise for our ultimate position, which is life. Yes, I. So, we're there in a Ghana and we have one of Ghana very talented reggae and dancehall Afrobeat artist artist go by the name of sean taylor sean welcome to the mindset program for the first time yes my lad honors and respect and thank you for having me it's a pleasure being here you know yes yeah, my man. brother give thanks for your stars yeah man yes, powers it's it's great we have the hype on the platform man. Long time we are on the eye, and um, it's, we, are, we did have to come at Ghana for really God no. get the eye. So, you know, it's an honor and a pleasure. Yeah. Must large up there, you know. Um, dark room entertainment for making this uh, possible also. See? So, Sean, we're there, so, you know, your hometown, also. Yeah. Talk to me about growing up in Oslo. Yeah man, you don't know. So Osu, um, basically is the capital of Accra, which is the capital city of Ghana. So it's like capital in capital. So I was born and raised here. So I basically grew up in an urban center, you know. So, yeah, but I didn't really, uh, my education, my mom was a teacher. Then my dad prison officer. I used to school where my mom worked at, so constantly I was going away from Usu to a place called Abeka, you know, with her. Is that still in Accra? Yeah, that's still in Accra. Yeah, so I was going constantly with her there. So, you know, that took a good about over 10 years of my growing up. So I basically say I grew up in Usu and Abeka. You get me? So in Usu I have a few friends, but most of my most of my friends basically that I grew up with are in Abeka. You get me? But Osu is as I said an urban place. So everything I learned, I learned about um, you know urban things. I learned about what's going on as compared to other other places that you could come from, you get me? So you grew up in an urban community. Yeah. And I can see that for myself, um, also is a very vibrant um, yeah. community. As you say, it's, it's the capital for, for a crop. Yeah. And yeah. we can see that you know, around here is very busy. Yes. Zin. And yeah. the eye is well known in Oslo. Yeah. yeah? For real. All right. Um, how much siblings um, are there I grew up with? Yeah, man. So, um, I have five other siblings, so that makes us six, you know. Mm -hmm. yep, um, we have four boys and two um, girls. You get me? So I have two sisters and I have four brothers. Um, yeah, basically that's it. And, and and what it's like growing up, uh, you know, with your brother and your sister. Yeah, yeah man, you know. So I learned a, a, a lot about culture, a lot about values, you know, a lot about morals because. It's like a hierarchy. You are with your elder sister, so when your mom or when your dad is not there, she's in charge. She can put you in check, you get me? Yeah. So we learn about all that stuff, learn about respect, learn about discipline. The whole part time she did have to put you in a check. Yeah, my whole part time she had to put you in a 
put me in a check too, she couldn't put me in a check. <laughs> yeah, man. So which part of the eye the in a in a the in a the line are your brother and your sisters then? They are what fourth, second, third? No, I'm number five. Yeah, yeah the last one. The last but one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. See? So you mommy and daddy spoil? Not necessarily spoil. <laughs> me, the music and everything spoil. <laughs> You get me? See? Yeah, man. For me, they don't feel stubborn. You get me? Alright, so. Yeah, man. Mommy and daddy still around today? Yeah, no, mommy and daddy still around, and they've been around before I was born and up until now. You get me? I'm still together. You get me? See, that is good. That is yeah, good. Yeah. Man. Um, Ghana is, is a predominantly Christian um, country. Yeah. Um, what what mom and dad think about what you're doing now as as a reggae and dancer? And artist? Do they do they do they bless you going forward in in in, in, your, in your endeavors? Yeah, man. You know, um, as I said a while ago, I did have to stop on it because I grew up in a Christian home and a disciplined home to become my mom was a teacher, and then my dad. Prison officer, you get me? So discipline, you have to go to sleep at a certain time. The dog gets locked at a certain time. You get me? And then music catch me, you know, somewhere in my teens. So I did have it now, because music is a night nice thing. So you used to tea photo on MT? Yeah, man, I did have to go tea photo a couple of times, I did have to get locked out a couple of times. See? You get me? You get rushed to one of them things. Yeah, man, all heap of things, you know, beer things, you know, out on the street and that never how it was supposed to go because I was supposed to grow up a certain way, you get me? But then I when the music get me now, I did have to just follow the calling and then it put me in a different part, you get me? See. Yeah man. So starting, um, mommy and daddy did have a, a lot of problem with it because you know people had a notion, especially with music back in the days, you know. Back in the days music wasn't lucrative. So people that did music is like, oh, you just have talent, and you know there's not much money you can make out of it. That's one. And next thing is, they used to relegate music to people that you know couldn't do well in school and couldn't do so high in school and all them things. They get me. And then from the background I came from, they were like, no. And me also growing up, I was doing well in school. You know, talking my class and doing well in all my subject, passing them and all them things. And I. Growing up, I didn't even know I wanted to be an artist. I wanted to be a, you know, Air Force pilot or something in the, you know, army or something, you know, mm -hmm. security forces in the top rank. But what, um, what, what actually, what actually make you your choose this part? So you know, um, growing up, I used to do laundry on the weekends on Saturday, right? And we have a neighbor who used to play a lot of sizzle and kickball and. and um, junior Raid, Barrington, Levy and all them people there, he, he used to play them constantly on the weekend and when, when we had to do laundry we just connect to the vibes. Like, no, we, we, we can do this too, we can do this too, you know. So then we start, we start, um, we start listening to the song and start singing along in my own words. And then I start now wanting to go to the studio to start recording. So that's how the whole thing started. I just connected to the vibe and I to the vibe and I'm like, no, this is what I got to do. And then it just started from there and it's been a long journey, you get me? See? Yeah. And 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 um how oh, oh, the music are treat you so far. Yeah man, the music are treat me very good. Got every blessing that I get in a life is some way somehow connected to the music. You get me? Yeah man, and then so what when you say every blessing, what do you mean? Kinda every blessing, yeah man, every blessing in terms of even my um, college education, not college, university education, through the music, I met somebody in my high school, I was very popular in my high school and I had a group and I was a leader of it, so one of the guys in my group took my music to the house and then his friend, his cousins and everything, they, they heard my sound, they were like, yo, we like him, bring him to the house. So I went to the house and they were like, all right, let's manage it. So they took me to the studio, paid for my session and all them things there. And then boom, after high school now, 
um, I, I got admission. I got admission into the university. But from where I come from, you know, I said nobody can pay for that. So it's like, all right then. I got it now, but how am I going? And when that message came, I was with them. So they were like, yo, it's a happy thing. Let's celebrate. I'm like, yeah, man, it's a good, it's a good look. But how am I going? Because we're gonna pay for it. And they were like, yo, man, we're ahead, man. Let's celebrate. Next day, boom, I came and then then talked to. The mommy and the mommy are like, oh, I work, we have a PFA. You get me? And through the music, they connect to them people, they have to get my university fees paid for my first year. And then, boom, I went into the university. I know someone a street boy. So I take over from this one, take care of the rest of the thing, then you get me? That's one. And many other things I can connect to the music, you get me? But that's one of the things that always reminds me that this music has something for me and I gotta keep doing it. You get me? So, what are some of the what are some of the um, artists them that you know, inspired the band? Yeah, a lot, a lot, a lot. Like my name, Sean Taylor. Originally, I'm not Sean Taylor. Anymore. My parents gave me the name Theophilus Petty Taylor. Taylor is my real name. But Sean, I, I took the name Sean because when I started following this music um, journey. I always, in everything I do, I either want to be the best or I'm going to the best. You get me? So I'm like, alright, who are the people killing it and who are the people on top of things? So I look at Jay-Z, who's Sean Carter, right? Mm -hmm. And then I look at Pop Daddy, who's well, Sean something. <laughs> and then um, we have um, uh, Sean Combs, mm -hmm. we have Sean Kingston, and even we have, we have Sean Paul and still around. And all them people here yeah, are Grammy and Sup Rank, right? So I'm like, all right, let me put that Sean name to my surname and you know, draw that energy. So that's how the name Sean Taylor came about. You get me? So these artists that I've mentioned are some of the people that inspire my name. And then I listen to different genres of music. My very favorite is jazz music. You get me? Even though I do all them things. So. I get inspiration from a lot. You know, I listen to all the artists that every top dancer artist listen to. I listen to Vibe Starter, Movado, Dexter Dabs, Popcorn. I listen to Burner Boy, listen to Whiskey, listen to Camilo, listen to, you know, Stone Boy, listen to Samini, listen to Shakawali, listen to Jupiter episode, listen to Shantel, of course. You get me? So if, 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 if someone listening your music for the first time today, yeah. How, how would you describe your music to them? I would describe my music as authentic African urban music. So reggae doesn't come into it and dancehall? Reggae and dancehall come into it. You get me? Because when we go back to the history, everything is still Africa, you get me? Mm -hmm. So when I say African and urban, we connect the African vibes, including reggae and dancehall, including highlight music, including music from Nigeria, music from South Africa, African music. Can you know, say Jamaica is Africa, no? Yes, my lord. So, all right. The people on the <laughs> island of Jamaica are African. <laughs> Every black man, African man, what do you mean? But, but um, yeah, I understand when you when you put context to what you're saying no, me, me, me overstand where I said. I see urban. Stone Boy um, made a statement last year sometime yeah. speaking about the origin of the of the music, reggae music, reggae and dancehall music. Yeah. And um, he was saying that the, the origin of the music is is Africa. See, I, I totally agree with him yes. with that because the people and the island they are they are African. Right. What, what 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 is their view and what Stone Boy said? Yeah, I, I I agree with him on just like I uh, explained a while ago. It all settles back to Africa. The the way I connected, I've never been to Jamaica yet, you know, but I sing songs and I talk to Jamaicans and they ask me if I'm Jamaican and how did I learn to speak like that? You understand? There are so many other languages in Ghana I can't speak. 
I don't understand and I hear them every day around me. See? You get me? So the connection is there like that. So, you know, the thing, the thing is the spiritual, you get me? So, yeah, that's why I circulate all back to Africa and I, that's why I do what's going to be You know? So you agree with Stoneboy? Yeah, I agree with Stoneboy. So, um, what, 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 what's, what's up and coming for um, Shanti? Because we know you must have some, some, um, something, something coming. What, what's coming? Of Give the course. people um, a little sneak peek of, you know, what is to come. It's 2023 now. Yes, man. So 2023 now, um, I'm planning to drop my first album ever. You get me? Yeah man. Over the years, over the years I've been doing um, singles and then to EPs, you know, and then I feel like it's about time and it's about time to present to my fans and to the world an album. I feel like I've found myself as an artist. You get me? And I'm ready now for the global for the global stage, for the global market. So I wanna present who I want the world to know me as and now to the world so I'm putting together an album. Um, I'm not gonna disclose the title of the album yet. What type of album we have? Yeah man, yeah look at album that have um, reggae in there, mm -hmm. that have dancehall in there, that have Afrobeat in there, that has um, high life in there, that has rap in there because I featured some rap, um, rappers in California, uh, Los Angeles. Um, yeah. The different different type of features, you know. I'm a, it has, I'm a piano vibes in there. It's Afro urban, you get me? Afro urban. Uh, yeah, Afro urban. And in terms of genres, I'll put it under Afro fusion and Afro beat, dancehall. Or, well, I'll not put dancehall, I'll put reggae because dancehall still goes under reggae, right? Yeah, man. So True. I'll, I'll categorize it that way. Rastafari. Right. Yeah. Um, at the moment, um, Afrobeat seems to uh, have that dominant force um, worldwide now in the music that people tend to be comparing um, reggae and, 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 and Afrobeat saying that Afrobeat has lick reggae or you know how you see it. Well, I, I, I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that. I believe that every genre of music and um, the market, you get me? Every genre, of, every genre of music and the market, every genre of music and, um, let's say, the audience. So, reggae music, Afrobeat, Afrobeat music cannot lick down reggae, it cannot lick down dancehall, it cannot lick down hip hop, it can only build up itself, just like every other genre of music, you get me, the world is, it, and it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a wave, now, one thing that I would say is Afrobeat getting big is because it's now getting big in the United States, right, which is the, the main market. Now, the reason why Afrobeat is getting big over there is because the rap music is like doesn't really talk about anything now. And it's violent and it's not really telling them to do anything right. And it's tense over there. But the Afro vibes make you want to relax, calms you down, puts you in a good vibe and good mood. So people want more of that. You get me? So that's basically what it is. Same as reggae. You understand? But now the marketing of it, Afro. Afrobeat music has top African promoters and all those people in right places that are booking the artists and locking them on the big shows. You understand them promoting the shows, right? Reggae, reggae music has been filling up some of all of these auditoriums that Afrobeat have been filling over the years, right? So it's just Afrobeat's time. That's just what it is, but it's not leaking down nothing and it's not no, it's just building up itself. You get me? Yeah, man. And even when you come back to it, Afrobeat has reggae vibes in there. Afrobeat has rap vibes in there. 
Afrobeat has different different vibes in there. It has jazz vibes in there. It has R and B vibes in there. It has every vibes in there. You understand? And Af these Afrobeat artists are featuring reggae artists. Afrobeat artists are featuring rap artists. You get me? So it's just building up itself. It's not just trying. It's not like trying to live down. Not you get me? Yeah, man. Yes, sir. So what? 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 The I see. Um. Reggae and dancehall in Ghana today. Well, reggae and dancehall is growing. Um, not at the pace that we would want it to. You understand? But um, it's growing, and some of us dancehall artists, Afro artists, we're still we're still trying to. Right now, it's a global market, as I told you, and I'm trying to present myself to the world. You understand? And I said Afro fusion. So in my Afro songs and in everything I do, I have dancehall vibes in there. And I believe that's what a lot of these dancehall artists are doing as well. So now, in Ghana now, you not find hard, hard, hard dancehall songs that you say, hey, this is dancehall. It's just here and there. Because a lot of these artists are now looking at the global stage. I don't know if you get what I mean. Yeah, I, 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 I over what they are saying. Yeah, man. Um, so, how, how, how do you, what do you think about um, the content of the music today? Do you think it needs to be more cleaner? Because now, you know, you, you, you have a, a, a lot, a lot more people listening to the music today. Whether it's Afrobeats, dance, or reggae, yeah. you have, you know, you have young youths listening. Yes. You see, um, recently, um, the Jamaica Broadcast Commission have banned. Um, a gun sound. You heard, you heard. Yeah, that. I heard that. What, what, what do you think about that? Well, the way I have not been to Jamaica yet, but the, the headlines I read from Jamaica and gun violence here, gun this here, gun that here, and I'm really asking myself. Well, the artists sing about it, the people watch shows about it, I'm not supporting it, but is that, is that, the, is that the only way or is that the best way? You get me? I don't know, I don't know if you get what I mean. So that's, that's one of the ways though, but is that the only way? They ban it on radio, they ban it totally. So I'm asking, they ban it on the radios, right? Yeah. Or they ban it totally. No artists can sing it. So, um, radio stations can't play certain songs that are um, highlighting crime, gun, drugs, okay. and other sexual, I think, you know, deragitizing, you know, women yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, you, you, you think the music influence? Do you think the music have any influence at all? The music definitely has influence, but many other things have influence too. You get me? But we're not talking about many other things. No. We're not talking about, <laughs> talk about the music now. Yeah, the music definitely have influence, and that is a big step. When, when I hear that news, I'm like, I look at it in a positive way and in a different way too. Not negative, I'm not saying negative way because who would say glorifying, you know, crying and all them things that is positive? Definitely it's negative. But I looked at it in a positive way and in a different way. Now in the positive way I said it's gonna challenge these artists to now sing about different topics. Because when you when you when you are listening to the playlist is this person is singing about the same thing, I'll do this, I'll do this, I'll do that. Then you, you change it to the next song, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. But really and truly they are not gonna do anything. You understand? And if you really do something, you go to jail. And you're an artist, you're not a, you're not a criminal. So it doesn't really make sense to always think about that. Like you are a creative, create something else. So I look at it that way. Now I look at it in a different way as in burning it outright. A lot of these artists have built careers and images and brands around these kind of things. Now it's like they shut down all these brands, they close down your business now. 
you get me? I think they could have, you know, done it gradually. I don't know if they had already tried that, but that's also another thing I thought because now a lot of people should get takeaway. And then there are no other avenue of, you know, no other avenue for them. A lot of people forget take with all these people that do dub music. They do, they sing about, hey, may I do this, may I do this, and then they change the lyrics and do dubs with it. So now, if all these people can't sing about these things, what are they going to sing about? You get me? Sometimes them think they just nice up the place, you know, because it's not, I will not say these kind of songs are songs that just started from um, Vibes Cartel era. I would, I would mention Vibes Cartel because a lot of times these things are associated with him, you know? And in no disrespect to Vibes Cartel in no way, but I'm just saying what the media, like what, what has been, you know, they associated with Vibes Cartel and Movado, mm -hmm. you know, the whole clash and all them things. But gun songs and all them things, they have been around before them. You get me? So. How did it grow and grow and grow and grow and grow to the point where now it's shut down fully? I think it can be, you know, step by step. Because a lot of people have built careers, as I said, around these things and now they're going to have to struggle. That's just what I think. So I look at it in, one, in a positive way and in a different way. That's the far right. So, yeah. all right, I hear what they are saying. And, um, yeah, I hope one is take on board what they are saying. Um, what, what's next? Separate and apart from we do, you, you're releasing an album, um, is there any singles coming out, you know? Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm going to drop one or two singles out of the album before it drops. Mm -hmm. um, yes, one of the songs for people to be looking out for is Party Nights. Yeah. People should be looking out for that. That's me trying myself on a different type of vibe, on the I'm a piano vibe. I don't know if you've heard about the I'm a piano. Come on, give them a little snippet tight. A little two second or three second. All right, hear this now. The party nice, so na na na. Nobody they watch, nobody, everybody they vibe, oh na na na. Oh, <laughs> sexy girls they around, oh na na na. Taylor Empire spell now we know they watch a mountain oh, na 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 and the bill is all on me eh, eh. Mm -hmm. yeah chilling I be one alive uh -huh. yeah every day we the vibe uh -huh. the way we the live we know say them no like but we know they mind we know watch pop mind body yeah man that's a little snippet of it just watch out for that song there. <laughs> yeah, That's man. The bar, right. And what the people can find, Sean Taylor. Yeah, man. So, Sean Taylor Music is on all digital platforms. Um, just search Sean Taylor. Um, S E A N T A Y L O R. That's Sean Taylor. On all digital platforms, my account is verified. So, when you see the check, you can check it out and listen to all my music. My very recent project that I dropped was Osute 2. So you can add Osute, O-S-U, tape, T-A-P-E, and 2. Now the Osute basically is a project I do every year and I feature artists from Osu onto the compilation and make it into an EP and then put it out there. So I have the volume 1 and the volume 2 on all the guitar platforms. So do, do check it out. The vibes in there is Afro vibes, it's dancehall vibes, it's reggae vibes, it's high life vibes, live music vibes, you know, authentic, traditional gang music vibes in there as well. So check it out also on all social media. It's Shantela G H. That's S E A N T A Y L O R G H. Yeah, man. So connect with me and follow me and. Just join me on my journey and, you know, I hope we have a longevity, you get me? Yeah, man. And, hey, me want to bless up Ija Stars, The Mindset. Me want to bless up Dark Room Entertainment. Me want to bless up Taylor Records. Me want to bless up Team AVO, GH Music Hype. Me want to bless up all the family in here. You don't know. Big up man like Zylo, big up man like Papi. Big up 
Taylor Empire, big up Busu. Yeah man, you don't know, this is Sean Taylor represent to the world, we say. Yeah man. Mindset. Respect. Time to rise. Time to open up your third eye. Full time you start to realize that all this time they've been telling us one bag of lies. Telling us a God in the sky that for you and I he die. Jenko Jesus or me call mile. These things they taught us from we were a child. Fast indoctrinating the innocent mind. Mind control is the signs of the time. Android, cyborg, AI, all these things combined. All these things combined might sound like a rhyme. But the evidence reality is right before your eyes. And I know this guys. The age of Aquarius is the shifting of the time. Sun, moon, stars, the planet in the cosmos align. As the cosmos align, low vibration, frequency decline. You strengthen your mind. Access to knowledge, information from the Almighty Creator Divine. Creator Divine. The time arise. I feel with time for rise. The time appointed. Because I am anointed. The time arise. I feel with time for rise. The time appointed. Because I am anointed. Time to See you on I guess I'm set. Smash that tin. See you on the next video. I guess start the mindset. Smash that subscribe button. See you on the next video. I guess start the mindset.